Welcome to Magic Economics. My name is Oluwale Godwin. Today we shall be talking on the topic Does elasticity change along a linear demand and supply curve with a constant slope? Okay, this is what we want to talk about today. Now we have this particular uh, demand curve here on this particular graph, and the slope of this demand curve is um, constant. We are going to look at that um, in a bit. Now let's check that um, the formula to calculate slope is simply vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance or what may um, be called a rise of our own, that is, a rise which is talking about the vertical distance of our own, that is talking about the um, horizontal axis, okay, the horizontal distance. Now we are going to check the slope from price zero to price two, that is, when the price was charged for this particular commodity, what is the slope, and uh, when the price was um, two, so what is, uh, what are we going to get? Now, this is price zero, and um, at this, we have this quantity for price zero. So when the price is zero, the quantity demanded is um, 25. And when the price becomes two, the quantity demanded is um, 20. Okay? In order to calculate the slope, it is simply um, what's on this axis divided by um, what's on this axis. So we have this small triangle here, which is um, triangle A, B, and then we have this 20. So that's simply going to be, the change in price is simply um, two minus zero because we are checking um, the change in price from zero to two. Okay, two minus zero. Then divided by now. Look at it. Uh, this is two um, at quantity twenty, and then this is zero quantity twenty five. That simply means that when the price increased from zero to two, quantity fell, and that is why the denominator here is going to be the new quantity, which is um, twenty minus the old quantity. So here it is the new price minus the old price. Then divided by and the new quantity is this minus the old quantity. So we have two minus zero. Then divided by. 20 minus 25, and that gives us a minus 2 over 5. The demand curve is downward slope, and then um, we have a negative uh, slope, okay, which is according to what we have here. And that simply tells us that um, there is a negative relationship between the price of this commodity and the quantity that uh, consumers are, um, are, are, are buying. Now, when we, when we check the slope from 2 to 4, that is from here to here, now we are talking about this little triangle, the triangle B, C, and then um, what is here, 15, B, C, and then this uh, value. So we are going to be having the new price, which is 4, minus um, the old price, which is um, 2, divided by, now look at it, when the price became 4, what is um, the new quantity, which is 15, then 15 minus the old quantity, 20. So we then have minus 2 over 5 again as a slope. Then we check the slope from 4 to 6. And when the price was 4, and then it became 6. So when the price was 4, um, we have this quantity, which is 15, and when the price became 6, we have this quantity, which is um, 10. So, new price minus old price, which is simply 6 minus 4, then divided by, and the new quantity at 6 is, um, the new quantity at um, 6 is just um, 10, okay, and then the old quantity at 4 happens to be 15, so we have 10 minus 15, 10 minus 15, and we still have minus over 5 again. Now, the slope for, from um, price 6 to price 8, so this is um, price 6, um, the quantity demanded happens to be 10, then this is price 8, quantity demanded is 5. So we have 8 minus 6, that is no price minus old price, then divided by, um, look at it, 10, okay, 5 minus 10, 5 minus 10, okay, this is the new quantity now, when the price goes to 8, from 6 minus 10, so we have minus over 5 again. Then let us check out the slope from uh, the price 8 to price 10, so when the price was 8, we have this quantity which is 5, now, when the price became 10, we have 0. Okay, nothing is demanded by um, the consumers at this particular price. So we have this new price. New price is 10. 10 minus the old price, 8. Then divided by the new quantity now is 0 minus the old quantity, which is um, 5. Now we have a minus 2 or 5. Okay, now, what is this telling us? This is simply telling us that along this downward sloping demand curve, the slope is the same. The slope is the same, so we do not need to take on cognizance of the minus sign. Minus sign is really telling us that there is a negative relationship between, between what is on the uh, price axis and what's on the quantity axis. But then 2 over 5 is uh, the slope that we really need to, to check. So now that we've established that um, this particular demand curve has a constant slope, what about the elasticity? Is elasticity of demand going to be constant along all of these um, different points? Now let's check the elastic, elastic with um, the midpoint formula. Now the midpoint formula is simply this. Price elasticity of demand equals um, the new quantity minus the old quantity divided by the new quantity plus the old quantity then divided by 2 as is the denominator is divided by 2 then times 100 over 1. And all of that 
divided by the new price and as the old price, then um, divided by the new price plus the old price divided by two. Okay, then times hundred over one. So we have that again. Now we we need to calculate the price elasticity of demand from price zero to price two. Now what is the look at this is price zero. Okay, price zero to price two. So the quantity at price zero happens to be twenty five, and the quantity at time two happens to be twenty. So what we then do is this is no quantity. The no quantity is twenty, which is Q two. Minus the old quantity is then 25, then divided by uh, the sum of the two of them as 25 plus then 20, then over 2, then times 100 over 1. When we do that, our answer becomes minus 22.22 percent. .22%. Then uh, down one here, um, this is the new price. The new price is going to be, since I'm moving from 0 to 2, the new price is going to be 2, and 2 minus 0, then divided by 2 plus 0 over 2, times 100 over 1. So 2 plus all of these will give us 200 percent. 200 percent. So by the time we do the division, they are going to be having minus 0 0.11, okay? So which is um, telling us that the elasticity of demand at this point is inelastic. Because whenever we have values of price elasticity of demand that is below one, we say that the demand is um, price inelastic. And here it is really, really inelastic because 0 0.1 is a very small value. Now we get to price elasticity of demand when we move from, point, uh, when we move from the price of um, 2 to price 4. So when the price was 2, what is the quantity demanded? It is um, 20, and when the price became 4, what is the quantity demanded? That is um, 15. So this happens to be the new quantity minus, this is the new quantity now, and this is the old um, quantity. So what do we do? 15 is the new quantity minus um, 20, which happens to be the old quantity. Then all of that again, 15 plus 20 over 2 times 20 over 1. Then we have um, the new price, simply because we are moving from this point to this point, which is 4 minus 2, then all of that divided by 4 plus 2 over 2, according to the formula times 100 over 1. So when we do this, this fraction gives us minus 5 over, uh, this bracket gives us minus 5 over 17.5, 15 minus 20 is minus 5, then times 100 over 1. Uh, divided by all of these, 4 minus 2 is 2, 4 plus 2 is 6, divided by 2 is 3, 2 over 3 times 100 over 1. So here we have 28.57 percent minus 28.57 percent, because of this negative sign. Then this is 66.67%. Um, so all of that is going to give us minus 0.43, which is still telling us that the demand is inelastic when we move from price 2 to price 4. But then by the time we, we compare our answer, 0.43 is um, greater than 0.4. That is telling us that the demand curve is becoming less inelastic as we move upward. Now, price elasticity of demand from 4 to 6. Now, when the price was 4, okay, quantity demanded happens to be 15. And when the price is 6 now, quantity demanded is 10. So this is um, the new price now, and this is the old price. So we come back here. 10 happens to be the new quantity as uh, price 6. If you have that, okay, 6, 10, then 4, so 15. So the new quantity now is um, dropping. Okay, so 10 minus 15 divided by 10 plus 15 over 2 is times 100 over 1. Then repeat the whole process for the price, 6 minus 4, um, divided by 6 plus 4 over 2 times 100 over 1. So 10 minus 15 gives us a minus 5. Uh, 10 plus 15 is 25 divided by 2. That's 12.5 times 100 over 1. So we have a minus 40%. Now all of that divided by 6 minus 4 is 2. 6 plus 4 is 10. And 10 divided by 2 is 5 times 100 over 1. So we have 40% as well. So minus 40% over 40% gives us minus 1. We need just the negative sign. That just tells us the negative relationship that is existing between price and point demanded. And then we talk about the value of 1. So because the but because the answer here is 1, we say that there is a unit elasticity. So a demand curve is unit is um, unit elastic if the price elasticity of demand is equal to 1. Okay, so that, and that's exactly what we have here. So what we then observe now is that moving from moving um, along the demand curve from the left hand, from the right hand side towards the um, left hand side um, on a when, when the demand covers a constant slope, okay, would give us an inelastic, um, I mean, will, will give us an inelastic um, elasticity from um, at the beginning, then it moves towards unitary um, elasticity or unit elasticity. So let us see what we are going to have on the upper part after the unit elasticity. So the next one now is from, is um, the price elasticity of demand, when the price was six, okay, so when the price became eight. So we are trying to check the new price elasticity of demand at this point. Okay, so when the price was 6, 10 was demanded, and then when the price is now 8, we have 5. So we, are good, we have 
a fall in quality demanded as a result of an increase in uh, price uh, from this. So this is going to be a new quantity now, and this is uh, the old quantity. So what then we have 5 minus 10 because this is new. 5 minus 10 divided by 5 plus 10 over 2, then times 100 over 1. Divided by, um, this is new price, 8 minus the old price, then into brackets 8 plus 6 divided by 2 times 100 over 1. Then that gives us, 5 minus 10 gives us minus 5. 5 plus 10 is 15. 15 divided by 2 is 7.5, then times 100 over 1. Then divided by 8 minus 6 is 2. 8 plus 6 is 14. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 8 times 100 over 1. So all of this is going to give us minus 66.67%. Then the denominator is going to give us 28.57%. So when we take that into consideration, divided, when we do the division, we have minus 2.33. Okay, so now we have two points. So what we need to look at is 2.33. And 2.33 is greater than 1. So at that point, our demand has become, the demand has become uh, fairly elastic. It has become fairly elastic. Now, uh, the next one that we need to consider, which is supposed to be the very last one, very last movement from when the price was 8 to when the price became 10. Now, when the price was 8, quantity demanded um, was 5, then the price now is 10 and quantity demanded falls to 0. Falls to 0. So let me just put this here to show the demand curve. Falls to 0. So the new quantity now is 0 because that is the quantity when the price became 10 minus the quantity when the price was 8 minus 5 divided by 0 plus 5 over 2, then all of that. Now, 0 minus 5 is minus 5. 0 plus 5 is uh, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 times 100 over 1. All of that divided by 10 minus 8 is 2. 10 plus 8 is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9 times 100 over 1. So we have a minus 200% divided by 22.2. And then our answer now is minus 9. So 9 is a value that is really, really greater than 1. And then that tells us that the demand curve at that particular point is elastic. Yeah, is elastic. So the observation now is that from this point to this point, from when the price was 10 to when the price was 6, we have um, elastic demand curve. Now between 6 and 4, because that was when we got, okay, when the price moved from 4 to 6, we have um, this elasticity, which is um, 1 in absolute terms. Okay, so that is between this point, between point C, between point C and point um, at point D, we have the unit uh, A, unit elastic demand. Then um, let's check this range from um, 0 to 2, then 2 to 4, uh, which is um, when it was 0 to 2, we have we have 0 0.11, which is in elastic demand. And when it was 2 to 4, we have uh, 0 0.40, which is talking about inelastic um, demand. So that's it. That is. All of this region A, B, and C represents A, B, and C. Okay. A, B, and C represents inelastic demand. Inelastic demand. So on the same downward sloping demand curve, with the same slope, we have three different elasticities. So from the left hand side, when we are coming towards the right hand side, we first encounter the elastic demand before the demand curve becomes unitary elastic and then the demand curve becomes inelastic towards the downward part of the demand curve. So why is that so? It is that because when we check the change in price that occurs at the lower levels, you know, that is here, the change in price that occurs at the lower level, which is um, this, at the lower level, the change in price in percentage terms is really really great. Look at it, 200 percent. Now we check the change in quantity. Okay, that is not as great as the change in price. Okay, it's just 20.2 percent when we move from um, the price of zero to price two, and that explains why we have this particular answer. Then look at um, the other part when the demand curve was in elastic. That is from two to four. What is the change that is occurring in quantity? The change occurring in quantity is 28.57 percent, so it is relatively smaller. Now the change that is occurring in price, which is 66.67%. And because of that, we also have um, an inelastic demand, although this is becoming less inelastic as we move from the um, right side of the demand curve um, to the left uh, part of the demand curve. Yeah, when, it, when, um, look at when it was um, 4 to, when the price was moving from 4 to 6, 
we discover from our calculations that the percentage that occurs in the price at that particular point, so whether we are moving from 4 to 6 or we are moving from 6 to 4, is the same. Okay, the percentage change in the point that occurs here is 40%, and the percentage change that occurs in price is still 40%. Alright, then any other point above that is going to give us a change in results. Now, when the price that's of demand move from the price of 6 to the price of 8, what has to be um, discovered? Discover that there is now a change in what is happening. Okay, because at higher at higher prices, the change um, the change that occurs in quantity is greater than the change that occurs in price. Okay, this is what we see 6.67% for quantity and then 28.57% for the change in price. So when the price is already high, okay, according to our calculations, we then discover that the change in quantity, although the change in quantity along everything, the change in price and the change in quantity happen to be the same. The price is changing by 2 and quality is changing by 5. But then when the price is already high, okay, the units change, the 5 units change in quantity and the 2 units um, change in price is going to give us this particular, this type of result. Alright, and that's why we have 6.67% and this and then we have 2.33%. Now, any point above that is going to give us another result that is when the price is very, very high, okay, the change that occurs in price is going to be reducing the percentage that occurs in price is going to be reducing by that of um, the by that of the um, that by the thing that occurs in quantity is going to be huge and it continues like that. Now look at what we have when it was eight to ten, we have a two hundred, which is the same five units drop in um, quantity demanded. Now represents a two hundred percent change in quantity, while the two units um, increase in price represents just a minus twenty two point two two percent. Um, change in price. Okay, so that is why there are different types of elasticities along the along a linear demand curve with the same slope. So that's that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button and also click on the subscribe button to get more of our videos. See you next time and thank you for watching.